What's up everyone? <clears throat> K20Z3 All Motor here, or some of you call me E-Man. Uh, so, there's been a lot of questions about uh, my car, this one. Uh, we took it to the uh, Honda Experience and it did quite well with the uh, new engine. And here we have the old engine. Uh, this is the original engine that came with the car. And this engine originally made uh, 465 wheel horsepower on the dyno. Uh, like I said, we never really ran it like that every day. Uh, the engine would probably run about 400 to 420 wheel horsepower on the street with methanol. And uh, it never it, it never broke. It never had any symptoms of, of damage. Um, I literally just swapped it out because I wanted to put rods in a new motor and possibly use this one to do rods and pistons uh, later. Uh, so this engine has been completely never opened, uh, not even the valve cover. Um, if you can see here, this the bond is still here from the valve cover from the factory. Uh, this All this stuff has never been, been messed with. This valve cover has never been off the car. Um, and yeah, I mean, this is basically the original engine um, and it's never gave me a problem um, you know for most of the life of the car of, of or well of this engine that has 25 uh, about 25,000 miles um, it's it for about 15,000 miles of it it's been on Motec and it's it's been rock solid um, prior to that it was on K tuner uh, same tuner Vit was tuning a K tuner back then, and he tuned the Motec that was on here. So, this uh, this engine had uh, the PRL turbo kit, that same turbo kit that's on this engine. Uh, this engine had, and you can actually see here where I grinded uh, part of the head to accommodate my uh, electric uh, wastegate, and the reason that I did the electric electric wastegate. Let me see if I can get a good view of this. But you could also see here on this head I had to trim it the same way. And the reason I decided to use that was because I was on MoTeC and I wanted the uh, ECU to control the boost rather than using a boost controller and having all these uh, auxiliary wires going everywhere. And in and, uh, my opinion the uh, electronic boost controller is probably going to be the best way to control boost on these small engines. So we decided to leave that on. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to partially disassemble this motor. Um, just to kinda, you know, show people that, uh, you know, one, it's never been replaced, and two, um, see what it actually looks like inside. Um, see what kind of uh, abuse it took. Because like I said, for about 15,000 miles, it's been on MoTeC with the larger turbo, so uh, it, this car was not driven like a grandma either, you know, I did um, put my foot in it several times. Uh, so let's uh, get some tools here and start getting to work. Now I'm not putting anything anywhere in any particular fashion because I kind of know where everything goes uh, with this one from previous experience with uh, building the new one. So now This is the first time this is going to be off. Kind of interested in seeing what's under here. it and uh, there it is yeah it looks really clean inside I mean it's only 
a 25k mile motor so it should be fairly clean stock valve train Alright, we're going to pause for a little bit. Alright guys, so I went ahead and I uh, removed this, which is the high pressure fuel pump. It uh, should still be good and functioning. Um, I had another one from a uh, for the new motor, so I decided not to use the stock one, which I'm sure is still fine. So we have to remove it because we need to take this uh, high pressure fuel pump uh, assembly off so we can uh, remove the head and then uh, we'll, this is only held on with two bolts so that should be easy. I just put it on here so no dirt would get in there while I'm uh, storing it um, and we'll proceed to remove the front cover. And then the head should be pretty much ready to come off. These little side covers are really prone to leaking. I've never had a problem with mine, but I've seen several people that have, and uh, I think it's usually just because people run really thin oil in this engine, which is not really the owner's fault, more Honda's fault since they recommend 020. I don't recommend 020, uh, even on the completely stock engine. Um, it's just too thin for this application. Pretty much any time you remove this cover, it's going to get ruined because it's just so thin and the way they mount it on here is uh, literally by RTV. So it's not, it's not expensive. Just get another one. No sense in trying to flatten it because it will never be flat again. And that just comes off like that. And then here is the high pressure fuel pump lifter. We'll just put that down in there because it's still a little oily. Okay, so unlike uh, past K-Series engines, um, you would have to actually remove the cams uh, to get the cylinder head off, which was kind of annoying. So without having any VTEC assemblies or complexities inside these, these newer heads, uh, Honda actually made the head studs exposed so you can all you really have to do is literally uh, remove the chain and uh, the front cover and then you can lift the head completely off so that's kind of neat uh, let's see we'll put this right here and we're gonna need this for some of them and we'll start down here remove all the tens that are on the on this front cover uh, I do have to remove this tensioner so we'll get the tools to do that really quick together fairly specific bolts for the tensioner
Uh, you notice here these bottom bolts they have a shoulder on them they're pretty much the ones that align the front cover to the bottom of the block so they're kind of important they go back in the same spot when you are uh, rebuilding just put these in this tray since they go to the front cover and we'll more or less try to keep them together same with these those came from the same spot So here we have to remove the sensor, and it is kind of tucked in there, so we have to kind of just see if you can get your finger behind it. It is kind of hard. I just work at it, and it should come out, and that's how it comes out. I'll let it down here because it's a little oily. And then for this part, you'll want to grab a... Uh, Kind of this size pry bar and you want to make sure you get all the front cover bolts off so double check because I already saw I forgot this one so just kind of look around make sure you got all of them and it looks like I did so we'll take this off right here Just pry against the cam gear. And that's how it comes off. The front cover's off. Now prior to this I had already taken off the uh, the crank pulley, which uh, on this car is kind of a big pain in the ass. Um, it seemed like it was torqued to 300 foot-pounds but I was able to get it off with a uh, air impact. So now what we want to do is release the tension from the chain so we can get the chain off. And what we kind of want to do there is use uh, one of these little, oh, I can't seem to find it right now. Um, so you're supposed to use what they call a pin. It's like a little green pin. And I'm a little unprepared right now because I don't know where I put it. So we'll have to use something else. And we can use this. Unless I put it in here. No. And let's see, the best way to do this is to put tension against this. So you can probably just use your hand, get it lined up, and then let go. And now the pin's in there. And use a 10 millimeter to remove the tensioner. Probably want to get this off because it's going to be in the way if we remove the head. We'll just take off these uh, guides while we're in here. It's just two bolts, pretty simple. And that's going to be the L. I already have out six millimeter. I guess the neat part here is that we can actually 
take this chain off without removing that guide, it looks like. No, we might have to remove the guide. Generally, you don't want to use an impact on these cam towers, but I'm just loosening it so I can get the chain off. Just so it could be quick for this video and we'll just snug them down a little bit. Since all that stuff's going to be taken apart later, when we do rebuild this engine with stronger internals. Okay, so now the head is uh, ready to be taken off. And for this, we'll use a, uh, the head bolts aren't very, very torqued down, I would say. Doesn't take much to remove them, if I remember. And you want to take them off in sequence, basically out to in. Do like a half turn. again and the last half turn should be pretty much full loose these are stretch bolts Remove all of them. these don't have to be all they're already all loosened, so I'm not Going in sequence here Which I don't think it matters And we won't be reusing these like this just use a towel to soak up the oil that's bleeding out of it that should be okay so everything Looks good here. Um, yeah, this engine looks like it was running just fine from the combustion. Right now we'll take a look at the actual uh, block. Remove the head gasket. 
Head gasket looks okay. And the pistons don't look bad either. It's kind of hard to turn with no bolt on here, but it is a little engine, so it's not it's not that bad. Yeah, I don't see any signs of uh, bent rods. They look pretty even to me. Usually when you see a bent rod on one of these motors, you'll notice that the uh, the piston will be lower on one side. And uh, yeah, these seem straight, so that's a good thing. I'll put this here so I don't lose it. flashlight the walls look very good look really good Kind of shocking. For how hard we ran this motor, it's pretty shocking. So now I'm going to flip it over so we can take a look at the bottom end. Gonna be oil in it even though we did drain it there's always a lot that sits in there so we'll finish draining it right now that way we don't make too much of a mess pump still has uh, stuff in there to try to get most of the water. Let's 
flip it this way. Clean up later. Bolt. There it is. There's the last oil pan bolt. Okay, so here we see the rods now. Take off the oil pump. And my butter fingers, I dropped a 10 millimeter in there. As you can see, we got some stock rods in there. Oh, oil pump's still doing its job. It's an un untouched motor here. And for the most part, it still looks okay. So I'll be taking this motor apart, cleaning it up, and probably sending it to uh, a machine shop so I can have uh, some pistons installed in it or fitted. And, um, and yeah, we can build ourselves another backup motor, which, uh, that motor did quite well. I don't think we'll need to, but, uh, if not, if anyone else is interested, I can probably just have one ready to go. And that'll be it for today.